Bethel family, my name is Carlos and I'm here with Lupe and she's going to be sharing with us how she came to Bethel and how she got involved in our ministries. Mi nombre es Lupe Estrada y por primera vez yo llegué aquí a la iglesia buscando un lugar donde congregarme con los, los tres nietos que yo tengo. Ay, me encontré con Cindy y ella me explicó muchas cosas, ¿verdad? Para congregarme aquí. Me mantiene el ver el cambio en los niños. Ajá, que ellos han aprendido cosas que no sabían. Y eso es lo que me mantiene domingo a domingo levantándome temprano, porque me gusta para mí temprano. <risa> a mí tampoco. <risa> okay. Aunque no, no sé mucho inglés, pero siempre verá cuando entro, le pido a Dios que me dé sabiduría y entendimiento para comprender lo que el pastor dice. Uh -huh. Y me gusta su enseñanza, la música uh -huh. ajá, y la convivencia que hay aquí. ¿Qué es lo que usted hace para poder traer a sus nietos a la iglesia los domingos en la mañana y, y los jueves al, al grupo juvenil? Pues los domingos casi siempre ellos están aquí, ¿verdad? Porque... Okay. Pero los jueves no, yo tengo que ir a Guapato a levantar a Tristan, traerlo a su servicio aquí con el, este, Joe. Y ya después cuando termina su servicio yo tengo que regresarlo de nuevo a Guapato. Guapato, ¿cuánto, cuánto se hace de manejar ah, de, aquí ah, de aquí para Guapato, Guapato son como 45 minutos yo creo. Ajá. Okay. Ajá, ya lo dejo allá y yo me regreso. Y usted trabaja, ¿verdad? Sí, ¿Sí? trabajo todos los días. Wow. Limpio wow. casa, que si alguien quiere que le limpie su casa. <risa> Ajá, limpio casa, trabajo todos los días, pero yo siempre les he dicho, ¿verdad? Y le he dicho a Tristan, uh, si mami no quiere ir por ti, es ok, yo puedo, yo puedo sí. venir a traerte y puedo venir a llevarte. Yo no, okay. no, no quiero que pierdas. Si tú quieres ir a la reunión de los jóvenes, con Joe, yo te puedo venir a levantar y te puedo venir a dejar. Cuando venimos, ¡ah, ahí está Betel! Dicen. <risa> <risa> bueno. ellos, ellos han cambiado mucho y se les mira el... Como que ellos se, ahorita empezaron a conocer verdaderamente a Dios. Mm. Uno a veces no le puede dejar a sus hijos o a sus nietos riquezas, casas, mm -hmm. carros, dinero en el banco. Pero yo creo que aunque usted los enseñe a amar a Dios, es la riqueza más grande que uno le puede claro. dejar a los hijos y a los nietos, ¿verdad? Claro que sí. Ah, y eso es lo que yo quiero, que ellos aprendan a amar a Dios y a temer a Dios para cuando ellos se encuentren en un momento de que alguien quiera tentarlos a hacer algo malo, el temor a Dios los haga re retroceder y no aceptar lo malo. Mm. Wow. I'm Chris Franz and this is my wife Ruth. Hello. And uh, we've been coming to Bethel for about seven years or so. Well, for my part, one of the things that I've seen you guys go through is a lot of our leadership pipeline in our small group ministry. And so I uh, just want to kind of help people get kind of a, a general recap of what that process has looked like and how that's gone for you. And so uh, it, it typically starts with Rooted. And the first kind of step in that journey was saying yes to being a Rooted facilitator. So how, how did that come about? What made you guys say yes to that? Uh, <laughs> Terry, Terry, Terry for yes. Asked us. <laughs> and uh, that that was that was really all it took. Uh, you know, we we prayed about it. Uh, I talked to our original rooted facilitator, and just after having those conversations, decided, yeah, we we want to do it. Quite honestly, when we facilitated, um, we didn't even think that our group wanted to 
stick with us. Right. And they did. Yeah. So that was awesome. How prepared did you guys feel to step in as small group leaders? Yeah, each of us were in the Army for 12 years and we have been through leadership training and we've led people before, but as far as leading a small group, just felt really ill-equipped to do it. Yep. Yeah, well, I mean, we have our own walk with the Lord and mm -hmm. trying to understand all the things and are we prepared to be able to do that with other adults, right? Yeah. And so when we told you that we were, you know, we were gonna stick together, you know, the first thing was like, okay, how can we help you? And so then the next step was we paired you up in our mentorship mm -hmm. process and you guys were paired up with Dawson to do uh, the small group mentoring. So what was that experience like? How did that go? What are some of the things you guys learned from that? Each week that we met had a specific, I guess, number module. of- Yeah, it was a module, mm -hmm. questions from the chapters that we were gonna be yeah. reading, mm -hmm. and we would go through them together. And what was nice about it, because as we were going through the, the book, it answered the questions that I had as far as how to lead the group. Right. You, we, ha we have to be good listeners. Just stop and just listen. Man, if you could look at somebody who maybe isn't quite sure if they're ready to take that step. If it's on your mind, if it's on your heart, pray about it. I would say... Just say yes. <laughs> yeah, just say just yes. Just say yes. Even if you feel yeah. ill-equipped or you're like, oh, I, I don't think this is right for me or I, I don't think that I'm, you know, uh, worthy or whatever, say yes. Because we're not doing this alone. And I would say... Uh, reach out, um, whether it's, you know, an, an email or filling out a connect card mm -hmm. and just say, I'm I'm kind of interested in serving or leading, but I don't know what it looks mm -hmm. like. Yeah. Oh, I think that's great advice. Yeah. Yeah. And come and see step. us. If you see us walking around the church, yes. come, come see us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, and exactly. Yeah. Ask some other people what that experience was like and get more details and information and maybe find the courage to take that next step forward.